Hello and welcome to Super Mario Words, the podcast where we talk about random Mario things and rank them. Catchphrase. That's okay. <laughs> we'll just edit in the real catchphrase. No, no, that that's the catchphrase. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sen. And I'm Drew. And today we will be discussing Professor Elvin Gad. Yes. Or E Gad. If as you wish. as he's generally called, because yeah. it's it's a pun. If I say it his full name it's no longer a pun which somehow makes it funnier to me <laughs> all right so anyway the thing about elvin um so yeah so elvin um <laughs> he is a, a ghost researcher yes who appears in luigi's mansion um where luigi busts ghosts um he is a short man uh with swirly eyed glasses and like an one, anime nerd one long tuft of hair right in the middle of his head white hair he's clearly very old yeah um yeah kind of a, a scrawny skinny little old guy yeah um and he gives luigi all of the gadgets that he uses to bust the ghosts um yes. including the poltergust 3000 which is a vacuum cleaner yes Bustin mostly makes luigi feel anxious it does <laughs> like everything yes um so that that's egad's deal um, and he has appeared in several other games. Um, as noted in a previous episode, he made, um, Mario's flood device from Super Mario Sunshine and the magic paintbrush, which caused all the problems in Super <laughs> Mario Sunshine. Um, he, he is a, uh, a figure of, of, uh, of contradiction of, of many, many dualities. Yes. He also makes the time machine that kicks off the plot of Mario and Luigi partners in time. Yes, which I don't remember the plot of that. It involves time travel. Well, I could have figured that out <laughs> from hearing the title. Um, but now you know. Yes. So so that gives us an idea of what his deal is. He's he's the, the absent-minded professor. Yes. But for ghosts. Yeah, the, the good mad scientist. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Doc Brown. Yeah. He is very Doc Brown, actually. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if... There isn't some some kind of lineage oh, definitely. going back to Doc Brown because he's a very kind of classic good mad scientist character. He is. He is. Everyone likes Doc Brown. Oh yeah, he's fun. Um, I guess because everyone likes Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, he's a likable guy. He he really is. Anyway, this is <laughs> very, <laughs> very off topic. Yeah, that's okay. Um, let's move on to our first discussion question. Yes. Um, so in the Mario universe, Great Scott humans are actually pretty rare that is true um professor elvin gad say that you're there professor <laughs> elvin gad is human yes um it's noted in the wiki and he looks like a human yes um kind of a weird human but so is everybody else yeah that's true well mario is our baseline human yes um i think he's like two feet shorter than princess peach yes the humans have a lot more variants they do except someday Someday we will talk about New Donk City. Except that they all have the same skin color. Anyway. <sighs> That's fair. Moving on. Um, how did he end up here in the Super Mario <laughs> universe? Um, good question. So, in Mario and Luigi Time Mans, we, can, we <laughs> see him in the past. Uh-huh. Um, he lives in the foothills of the Thwomp Volcano. That sounds hilariously dangerous. It does. It does right up his alley. Um, his past self is... We just see him as a sprite. He looks basically the same, only younger, and with brown hair instead of white. Um, where is the sprite in the... Um, there, it's actually a different page. Oh. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. They literally just colored his hair. They, they did. He otherwise looks identical. Yeah. Um... He just has always been... He was born an old man. He <laughs> pretty much. Um, so, yeah. And he is already mad scientisting at that point. So he's been... The very least we know is that he has been in the Mushroom Kingdom for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now we know, canonically... Canonically. Actually canonically, although sometimes <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, Who even knows anymore? Mario and Luigi were brought by a stork. Yes to unknown parents yes although we know that they they were the children of the mario from donkey kong right new donk city yes yes actually 
That's a good point, right? Like, <laughs> New Donk City is one of few places that is established to be the native home of humans. Of humans. Yeah. Wow. You know, <laughs> it never struck me until not just now how unique it is in that respect. Yeah. Um, like, it turns out New Donk City is actually an extremely important um, place in the Mario universe. It is. It is. So, um, so we do know. Yes. For... Pretty much for certain that Mario originates in some way from New Donk City. Yes. Because the founding of the city, as depicted in the New Donk City Festival, mm -hmm. is the plot of Mar um, Donkey, not, Kong. Donkey Kong. Yeah. Mario Bros. is, is a different game. It is. Um, the plot of Donkey Kong. Yes. Where Jumpman climbs up the tower and yes. defeats the Kong. And we know that the Kong mm -hmm. is Donkey Kong's... The current Donkey Kong's grandfather. Cranky Kong. Is it is is it father or grandfather? Grandfather. Okay. Um and it stands to reason that Jumpman yes. is either a a predecessor of Mario or Mario himself. Doesn't appear to be Mario. No. Um we don't really have any record of Mario knowing of New Donk City. Yeah. Um and uh Pauline doesn't recognize him. So she's probably a descendant of the original Pauline. Yeah, which makes sense. Um, so and so if we if we assume that the Donkey Kong timeline and the Mario timeline are moving at about the same time, right? Then it would make sense that Mario is Jumpman's grandson, and so is Luigi, obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't know exactly the rate at which the Kongs age. Well, that's but they true. they are super intelligent apes. So yeah. they probably have close to human lifespan. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Gorillas have, I think, near human lifespan, don't they? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's just assume for the sake of podcast that they do. Yes. Um, so we're assuming that that Mario is from New Donk City. Yes. Or his family is. His family is from And him. his grandfather was Jumpman. Yes. A cruel man who yes. abused animals. Yeah. No, Actually he's... canon. Not a, not a joke. Yeah, like... Donkey Kong 2 is about Donkey Kong Jr. saving Donkey Kong from Jumpman. Hmm. And Donkey Kong Jr. being the father of the current Donkey Kong. Yes. Who would be, I guess, Donkey Kong the third. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so probably either Professor Gad is, or his family is, mm -hmm. from New Donk City. Yes. The origin of all He's humans. a Donkeyan. Uh, that's... <laughs> Terrible. Donkite? New Donkite. <laughs> New Donkite. Do you think that there was originally a Donk City? Ah, probably. That's, I mean, that's probably where humans originally came from mm. before the plot of Donkey Kong. Yeah, we don't really know what are the interactions with uh, the humans with other species yeah. on the plane of existence. That's true. Um, Mario, the Mario series plays a little fast and loose with geography. Yes. Probably more than any other thing. Each different game just has completely different places. That is true. Um, Super Mario Odyssey has like an actual globe. Yes. Um, the layout of which we will probably never see again. <laughs> but I think it's fair to continue to assume that New Donk City exists, even if it's not explicitly in the other games. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, clearly... Because it's useful to us. And if, I mean, if we assume that... Uh, that all of the places Mario visits do exist yes. in the main series, um, then we're really looking at a world that's divided into a lot of relatively small kingdoms kind of dotted all over the world. Yeah. Um, and New Donk City could itself be a city-state. Yes. The There are no nation-states no. in Super Mario. Yes. It's all... Just Clearly a superior world. Small kingdoms. Well, I mean, there's monarchies everywhere. That Okay, that's not as good. Um, so, man, this, this has really been a chestnut, uh, because we're like nine minutes in. Oh, man. Um, anyway, this, back to Elvin. So, clearly, I kind of feel like it would make a certain amount of sense if his, his family have, have emigrated out of New Donk City. That's the word, right? Em yeah. Emigrated? Yeah, emigrated. Um, which is probably where he comes to be living Near a volcano, I guess. Yeah. Um, so his parents probably also were involved in research, because why would you move to a volcano? <laughs> um, to be fair, he might have moved to the volcano sometime after moving out of his parents' place, but 
they might have also been scientists. That would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I do I do like that interpretation. Um, he was the child of geologists. Yes. Um, who decided to study ghosts. Yeah. Ghosts are his teenage rebellion. <laughs> yeah, the, the ghosts, yeah. And that um, goes smoothly into question number two. Yes, why is he so obsessed with ghosts? No, that's a good question. Um, as far as we know, he's been studying them for a good while now. Yeah. Um, the wiki claims he moved to the Boo Woods when he was 20 years old. Oh, wow. Um, so quite a young man. Yeah, when he he's did... been... And he is clearly very old now, so he's been studying ghosts for a long time. Yes. Um, it's not quite clear what he has learned from yeah. it, but... Well, he's learned how to make ghost vacuums. That's true. Clearly... Another weird invention. He's he's invented a lot of things. Yeah. It, it seems like any time the series now calls for an invention, it just comes from Egad Indeed. most of the time. He's invented, you know, a number of things. A magic <laughs> paintbrush, flood, uh, poltergust, um, Gooigi. Gooigi, yeah. Who is um, Luigi made of goo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just great. We're going to have to have a whole episode on Gooigi alone. I have not played the game that Gooigi is in, but he delights me Yeah. to no end. Yeah. I probably need to play uh, Luigi's Mansion two and three before Absolutely. we do an episode on Gooigi. Yes. Perhaps we should have done that before doing this episode. Um, I mean, I have played Luigi's Mansion, although I kind of want to go back and play it again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have, I have familiarity with EGAD. I've, okay. That's fair. I've played, um, Superstar Saga and I've, I've played Luigi's Mansion and he's in Sunshine or he's, yeah. he's mentioned in Sunshine. So he, he's a character I have experienced in the wild. Yes. Um, I wouldn't jump into an episode with zero prior experience. Hold on. I'm just in the middle of verifying if that's actually true or not. <laughs> um, no, it's true. Yeah. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> not yet. Um, I'm sure it, it will happen, but... I'm sure it will happen, but more on point. Yes. Um, so what do you think caused his obsession with ghosts? Well, I have a theory. Yes? Um, I have two different theories, actually. Okay. That's very strong. Yes. The first one is, okay, when we look at Egad's history, when we look at Elvin's history, I'm going to keep calling him this. Mm. He is kind of, he's very smart, but doesn't have a lot of common sense. Mm. He yes. gets really focused on things to the exclusion of everything else. Uh huh. And he has odd but endearing relationships with our main characters. Uh huh. I think Elvin is autistic. Well, I think ghosts are a special interest. I mean, clearly, all the good characters are autistic. Clearly. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Yeah. What is your other theory? Um, okay, well, the thing about... Go why ghosts specifically? Right. I think, so these are two complementary theories. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I think Professor Gad has a, a fascination with the past. Okay. Which is why he uh, ends up building a time machine later on. Mm. We have ghosts, and we also have, you know, we have the magic paintbrush, which doesn't really fit this, but I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. Um, well, we do have the connection between Luigi's Mansion and Sunshine with the portal paintings. Yes, that is true. And we, we talked about how that functionality mm. is something he was trying to replicate with the paintbrush. Yes. Yes, the portal paintings are something that he was perhaps, perhaps before he decided to build a time machine, he was trying to uh, create a time portal, mm. a painting that you could use to travel through time. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I mean, it doesn't all have to be completely unified. Clearly, no, he's, I know. he's a defend, de inventor with uh, a diverse skill set. Yes. Um, and uh, I believe the painting power mm -hmm. of trapping someone in a painting was yes. something that the boos that king boo could do oh yeah no that's right it, it relates to ghosts like that yeah so if mm -hmm. he's studying the abilities of ghosts he could yeah. have developed the magic paintbrush there um, you go and we know that I, ghosts aren't the only ones who can do that because those paintings were also in um princess peach's castle yeah we know there are other artists who can do that but well, clearly clearly too. it's a ghost power yeah that they have yeah perhaps ghosts being creatures of pure spirit and thus pure emotion can put out their artistic intent more clearly 
Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> um, I have a different theory. Yes. That, uh, as is appropriate for confusing time travel plots, yes. reverses the causation. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, so consider that based on the plot of Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Yes. Um, so Mar the Mario Bros. go back in time mm -hmm. to save his lab from burning down. Yes. Um, and his present self... Invents the Hydro Gush 4000, and then he uses that to send water through the time hole. The time hole. To calm the volcano. <clears throat> now, Partners in Time involves a time hole. Yes. If you were an inquisitive young man and two dashing brothers uh, jumped through time yes. and sent a river <laughs> through to save you, yes. you might probably mm. would be left with kind of a strong impression yeah you might even attribute such a miraculous event to the supernatural mm. so remember shortly after this uh he moves to boo woods yeah so it's possible that this event inspired him to try and study um what could have been the source of such a miraculous event as a oh. time hole opening up and and saving him that is that is pretty strong. Yeah, and this began his his lifelong obsession with the the paranormal. Yes, and the the impossible. Yes, um, and of course, eventually he would have to 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 close the causal loop, invent a time machine. Yes. So it's possible that the time machine is even related to his ghost research. Mm, that's true. If if ghosts can manipulate reality in different ways then they might Which, be able... Let's be honest, they probably can. Yeah, I mean, they're all about messing with reality and being weird. <laughs> Two things that are vital to time travel. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. So and they're... honestly, if you are saved, you know, that same event can explain the splitting off into a, the seemingly unrelated research path that c created Flood, you know? Mm, yes. Um, you've got water, you've yeah. got time travel, you've got a seemingly paranormal event. Yes. Um, it all ties together. Yeah. And my only regret is that we couldn't use time travel to explain that he is actually a being of a time loop with no beginning or end. <laughs> like, if he went back in time to become his younger self. Oh, God. I love <laughs> stupid time shit like that. Well, we don't know. He could be his own grandfather. I, 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 that's to be seen in Luigi's Mansion 4. I'm sure. <laughs> I feel like if there was anything that we could use to make that connection, it would have been mentioned in the plot synopsis of Partners in Time. I mean, that's fair. Unless we're talking about a different time traveling event. Oh, gosh. To I take mean, place. No, in... I think uh, probably. Yes. Um, I think that we've, we've answered this question yes. to our satisfaction. Yes. Um, so number three. Um, so apparently at some point, um, he opens up the Starbeans Cafe to oh, yes. raise funds for his research. Which, fair. The, the, it seems like all of these things would be pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, so he is, he, he has a, a an entrepreneurial streak. Indeed. Which is a word that's a little hard to say. <laughs> which makes sense because Flood comes from... Something called Gad Science Incorporated, you know? Hmm. So he's not just making inventions, he's also selling them. I'm trying really hard to imagine him running a business. Well, maybe and... maybe it's he's not the actual one who runs the business. Yeah, he might have business partners. Un unseen business partners. Indeed. Um, unseen and mysterious, and perhaps, perhaps they will be the villains of a future game. Probably. Probably. Anyway, so, maybe that's who King Boo is. So I guess the question is, why a cafe? What led him to choose this as the business that would keep his research afloat, <laughs> so to speak? Um, also, we can we can see from this, yes, that either the Mushroom Kingdom or wherever, whatever nations, whatever city state he resides in, yes, um, either is not interested. Or does not give research grants because mm, he yes. has to raise the money himself. That is true. Do you think uh, he's in the Mushroom Kingdom? or You know, it's a good question. He's Are the Boo Woods within the Mushroom Kingdom? Hmm. It's hard to confirm because 
I mean, the Mario Brothers go where they want. They do. So they there's no where... there's no evidence that you need a passport to travel yeah. in this universe. That's true. Um, all you need is a plot-relevant form of travel. Yes. Like a hat balloon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. So, so he has to raise the money himself. Yes. Um, and so he opens, I guess, a, a coffee shop. He, I, or a juice bar? Is it coffee or is it juice? Uh, it says a juice shop. I think the Starbucks reference might just be a localization thing. Mm. But then again, this looks like an espresso machine. If you're making something out of beans, it's yeah. not juice, it's coffee. Yes, or some other bean-based drink, depending on what kind of bean it is. But Are there other drinks you can make out of beans? Um, hmm. Probably? There are a lot of beans out there. This one is called the Tihi Espresso. Um, hmm. I think it's a coffee shop. I think it's coffee. Which, you know, there's a certain kind of sense to that, right? Because... Yeah. A hard-working researcher is probably going to be drinking a lot of coffee. That is true. Like good, good bean juice. Yeah. Um, and so it might make sense. You know, he he clearly has the capacity to travel. Yes. Um, so it's possible that he may have been a collector of exotic beans. Ooh. And this inspired him. Um, because throughout the game... Um, in uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, mm -hmm. you are collecting and bringing new beans to make new blends. Ah, okay. Um, so you can see that he clearly has an interest. He he's <laughs> got to be a coffee nerd. He yeah. In fact, that makes sense. He comes to visit personally every time you create a new blend. He is a huge coffee. nerd. He's a co all right. He's a coffee nerd. That's nice. got, that's got to be it. Nice. We're really discovering a lot about this guy's character. <laughs> Honestly, recording this is making me like him more. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He just never grabbed me that much until now. Yeah. But he's clearly a he's a multi layered character. He's made a surprisingly like diverse array of appearances in the games. Yeah. He's appeared as a ghost researcher, a water slash magic goop creator. <laughs> um a, a time traveler who used to live by a volcano. And a small businessman. And a small businessman who <laughs> runs a cafe. Yes. I don't know that any Mario character has been given this amount of like diversity in the different like roles they play. That is true. Like When Mario appears in a game, you kind of know <laughs> what his deal is. It's a him. It's, Mario. Yeah. He's going to jump and run. Yeah. And... Not do plumbing. <laughs> it's kind of an informed trait. I mean, he will travel through pipes a lot. It's true. I, I have a sudden urge to dig into this Mario plumber thing, but we're gonna have to. That's that. That's a entirely different episode. Mm, yes. Um. So, do we have any other questions about this cafe? Um. Not none that come to mind. All right. I think we we've discuss this a reasonable about we, we've hit upon the true reason for his interest indeed um, being a big nerd yeah he is a huge nerd he was yeah. inspired by his interest in in the beans in the beans to open a coffee shop um okay that's a pretty solid reason so let's move on to our next discussion question yes um so there's clearly an element of magic yes in his inventions um he has an invention literally called the magic paintbrush. Indeed. And and um, his other inventions are able to interact with ghosts or be alive when they shouldn't be. Uh huh. Not uh, just a flood, but also Gooigi. In Ma in Mario Party Seven, he has created a magic orb, <laughs> which uh, lets you turn invisible. That makes sense. Um. That that's consistent with the other stuff he makes. Right. So, clearly, he is a he, he is creating a blend of magic and technology. Indeed. So, I think what we can understand from this is that his study of ghosts has the capacity mm -hmm. to give him enormous magic power. Yes. 
which he uses to turn people invisible. Yes. Um, yes, he, he is a scientist of the supernatural realm. Right. However, being a scientist, yes. um, his belief stat is low, which <laughs> makes it impossible for him to cast magic. Yes. So he has to work it into his inventions instead. Indeed. Man, I kind of, I suddenly want to dig deeper into how magic works in this universe. Maybe we should do a Magic Koopa episode. Ooh, that sounds fun. Think about magic. Um, it's kind of magic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we we have in in uh luigi's mansion too he apparently finds a society of friendly ghosts yes but not casper (laughs) a friendly ghost he's he's different um yes because casper is innately friendly while these ghosts are kept pacified by the dark moon yes uh, a concept I find ethically troubling, <laughs> but we'll just have to accept that for now. Yes. Um, so clearly, uh, he might rely on these friendly ghosts to teach him Ooh, yeah. the powers of magic. That is true. Um, we can probably assume, timeline-wise, Yes. so Sunshine was published after Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion, then Sunshine. Yes. So probably after the incident in Boo Woods, yes, um, it seems possible that he then shortly after was when he moved to um, what was it called again? Uh, it was uh, Evershade Valley. Ah, yes, um, where he meets his friendly ghosts who could have helped him integrate magic into his inventions, which led him to unlocking the painting power, which remember yes. is an ability used by ghosts. Mm, yes. And that allows him to create the magic paintbrush. Yeah, that makes sense. So it also yes. makes sense that he could, he would be able to create something that turns you invisible because ghosts can also do that. Yes. So he's learning magic from ghosts. Yes. This man <laughs> is extremely dangerous. He sure is. He could become the most powerful character <laughs> In, in, in the Mario universe. Ah, oh, man. He made a Gooigi. <laughs> he... This man not only is potentially dangerous, he can't be trusted to do anything <laughs> sensible or responsible. He made Gooigi. <laughs> a whole Luigi. He made life and he turned it into a Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> That's unconscionable. <laughs> You took a perfectly good goo and you gave it anxiety. Even Luigi probably doesn't want to be Luigi. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that he is tapping into the power of ghosts. Yeah, the the supernatural in its deeper and bigger meanings. Ultimately, he is going to become a necromantic scientist. And transform himself into a tech lich. <laughs> Is he? Yes. He wishes to gain the power of unlife. <sighs> for the same reason all mages do. So that his research may go on past his mortal coil. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> that is the fate of Egad. <laughs> Egad? Yeah. <laughs> so... There is one downside to this stra- this this whole idea. Yes. According to Mario Universe naming logic, if he becomes a lich, he will need to be named Dry Egad. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I think we've peaked. We could probably do the rankings now. Yeah. I mean, we sure peaked the microphone. It's true. Um all right. Uh... So let's open up our rankings. So we have our seven guys. Yeah. We'll start in the middle, as usual. Um, I feel like he's a rich and deep character who easily goes above Charge and Chuck. Absolutely. Um, what about Flood? Um, well, he did create Flood. He did create Flood. And the, I think Flood's a lot simpler than Egad's role is. And He is a very, like... He's a deep and interesting character, but also doesn't have a lot of sustained appearances. Yeah. Um, but I could see ranking him above. Now, again, I warn you, I cannot be objective about the living cake. 
so I'm going to need you as a second opinion, above or below Bunt. I am... I'm going to say above okay. for the reason that uh-huh. if if he put his mind to it, Elvin could absolutely create more living pastries. He is the key. Yes. To more bunts. Yes. And, and for that reason, I put think... Put him at the top. <laughs> uh, but seriously, though, um, so above bunt, um, what about painting? Um, gosh, it's hard to say. The paintings, the paintings are a really strong aesthetic element, and Egad is more self-contained than that. Mm. And also, I think the very fact that he fills more, more roles makes him less strong in that sense than the paintings. But I could see arguments for him going above. I I feel like. There's a lot of richness to him. Yeah. And I think that um, he lends a lot of, of character and personality in to a lot of things. Like, he is important, of course, to Luigi's Mansion. Yes. And we feel his influence in Super Mario Sunshine. Um, he just kind of seems to, to impress himself upon <laughs> the space wherever he goes. That is true. And... Um, he's very, he's a very dynamic character. Yeah. And I think that I would put him actually, yeah, above paintings. What do you think? Well, there, I think that's a good argument. All right. Um, then let me just add some, some very, some of my very loud typing to the mic. Professor Elvin Gad. You know, when I picked up this keyboard, I was like, this is going to be a problem for recording. Should I do it? And I was like, I'm going to pick it out anyway. Yeah. So now every time I type on mic, <laughs> everyone hears it. Clicky, and clicky. No regrets. No regrets. Anyway. Yes. Um, so I think that that is, uh, is our place to wrap up. I think this was a very good one. I agree. Um, have you thought of an outro catchphrase yet? Um, you know what? Keep on, keep on pounding those blocks. Mm, we'll workshop it. Yeah. Bye. Bye.